Welcome to Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Your host, b and General Manager Kevin Jean and Daiwa Ranger Pro Staffer Steve Graff will keep you up to date on what's happening on the best lakes in the Arklatex region. With a primary focus on Sam Rayburn and Toledo Bib, two guys who have fished at a high level with Pro-Am experience with ABA, BFLs, Toyota Series, and BASS Opens. Anglers with a wealth of knowledge and willing to share. So pull up a chair kick back and see why so many anglers watch tackle talk live here are your hosts kevin jean and steve graff welcome to another edition of tackle talk live a new season of tackle talk live here in 2022 on the 4th of january and kevin man 2021 was a rough year overall (laughs) but uh, it was a good year for Tackle Talk Live. It was. It was a really good year for Tackle Talk Live. We've had great growth, yep. Steve. Uh, we've added a ton of things for Tackle Talk. We've, of course, Facebook and YouTube. We're now on Instagram, on uh, Spotify podcast, uh, and keep growing. We're just going down the list, so it's if growing, you, growing. If you can't find us now, you ain't looking. Hey, you're you're right about that. You're right about <laughs> so, that. But anyway, we're glad you tuned us in. We appreciate each and every one of you. Again, we, uh, as everybody knows, especially all you anglers out there, this kicks off uh, the fishing season. First it's week here. in January, it's here. It's here. Everybody's uh, a lot of guys are at Sam Rayburn already right now, getting ready for the BFL this weekend, and it just kickstarts everything. It's fixing to be a fast and furious, and should be a great spring, Kevin. It, it really, it really should. But our lakes need water. Well, lakes do need a little bit of water. Um, grass is starting to pop up a little bit over there on Sam Rayburn. We'll jump into a Sam Rayburn fishing report a little later in the show, but grass is starting to pop up. Um, but with the water levels, even like at Toledo Bend, it, it should make for a good spring so far. Yeah, uh, it really should. It got cold this week, though. It, yeah. it got cold it on us. It knocks it back a little bit, it, but, but it it's, did. it's only a couple of nights, so it probably yeah. doesn't mess it up no, too it's bad. No, it, we'll have another little – it's going to get warmer through the week, another little cold spell coming about Friday, but it's going to warm back up, so – uh, it, it should be it, – it, it really should make for a good spring. February is always the month for us, y'all. I mean, it's always the month that's where we're going to get the major storm, just like we did this past mm-hmm. year. We had a week long, which really hurt probably yeah. the grass in some places. Yes. It was a whole week of sub 30-degree temperatures. It was brutal. And uh, so hopefully this year – uh, and we had a lot of high water last year. Ray a lot was 10 of high to 12 water. Well, high. and that's what, yeah, that was, that's what killed it. There, there are all this speculation on what killed grass. In my opinion, that high water uh, is yeah. what killed it. When I mean, you eliminate when you, the sunlight. When you get 10 foot of water on top of that yeah. grass, that, yeah. that's going to kill it. Uh, and we're, we got a guy to, on the, on the show today, Steve, biologist Villas Dowden, who, who will help us break that down. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, Again, I'm Ranger Dower, Pro Staffer Steve Graff. This is Kevin Jean, VNM General Manager and President for VNM Bates. And uh, again, welcome to 2022. We appreciate you tuning us in. Uh, we're going to give you again. We got as Kevin's already looked. We got Villas Dowden coming out. Going to get some good insight on some shock test reports that he's done over the mm-hmm. last few months on probably Toledo Bend for sure. I know he did something right here in my backyard because I saw him out there one day. I never did get the results for that, but I may even ask him about that. Uh, and we got some Brandon Belt news. Going to talk a little bit about that. Very interesting news. Yeah. And for any of you that registered, yeah. that have already registered for the Brandon Belt tournament, I'm sure, like me, you got the email. And in that email, it included about future tournaments yeah. that they might be putting on. I talked to Ryan Williams, the tournament director, had a, 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 a length a little bit about this. We'll, we're going to jump into that as well. This that, that, this is really going to be something big, Kevin. That Brandon Belt yes. deal is just growing bigger and bigger. It, it is. And this first tournament that they're putting on is going to just kick all that off. Oh, so absolutely. It, it should be a, a really a special deal that Brandon's putting together and sinking a lot of money into. So uh, Bass Cash Bash has started. Yep, Bass Cash Bash is here. It's that time of year once again. Fish are released. They're tagged. They're in the water. There's boats. There's trucks. There's lots of money. Lots of money on the line out there, guys. All you got to do is go wet a hook. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. And uh, we'll try to have uh, PD on the next couple of weeks Mm kind of highlight some of what's going on. I know he's added some lakes too. So uh, two more, I think two more lakes have been added to the list. So we'll talk about that as well. But first, we're going to take a real quick break, recognize a few of our awesome sponsors. And uh, so stay tuned. You're watching Tackle Talk Live. We'll be right back. Toledo Health is a full 
full-service primary and acute care clinic. Nurse practitioners Jarrett Rule and Melissa Vines bring quality health care that's needed and convenient to the area. Whether it's a stomach virus or a hook in your hand, Toledo Healthcare will try and meet all your health care needs. Appointments available and walk-ins are always welcome. So the next time you're feeling down at Toledo Bend, stop by Toledo Healthcare, located on Highway 6, just south of Toledo Town, or you can call 318-508-5323. For all your boating needs, check out Shreveport's newest marine dealer, The Boat Shop. Raymond Kidd and his great staff will take care of all your engine repair needs or anything else that needs fixing. A certified Yamaha Mercury dealer, they carry two of the best fishing boats on the market from Sea Ark and Camus. The Boat Shop is never short on trade-ins as they're always willing and able to make you the best deal possible. Looking for great boat accessories? They're a full support garment and Minn Kota dealer. So the next time you're in the market for a new or used boat or maybe you just need to service the boat you have let the boat shop fix you up to learn more call 318-402-0399 or go to shreveportboatshop.com the next time you're on I-49, just south of Natchitoches, Louisiana, stop by Cypress Knee Outdoors. A store within a store, Cypress Knee is located inside 3J's 4-Way. Whether you need gas, food, or drinks, they have it. While you're there, check out Cypress Knee Outdoors and pick up whatever hunting or fishing tackle you need. Top name brands like Strike King, Santos, Pro, or the number one soft plastics made, v &M. On the hunting side, they carry guns from Mossberg, Winchester, and Remington. Plus, they've got a great supply of ammunition. Let John Abram and his staff show you everything Cypress Knee has to offer. Located just one mile east of 127 on I-49 or call 318-238-HUNT. You're watching Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Now back to the guys with all the inside scoop, Kevin Jean and Steve Graff. You're watching Tackle Talk Live. Again, we thank you for tuning us in. We look forward to, again, a great season this year. And real quick, we're going to recognize a few sponsors for this segment right here, presented by Toledo Health, The Boat Shop, 3J's 4-Way Home of Cypress and the Outdoors. Thank you, one and all. We appreciate each and every one of you. And on the Tackle Talk hotline, Kevin, we've got LDWF fishery biologist, Villas Dowden. Villas, how you doing, bud? I'm good. Happy New Year to y'all, Steve and Kevin. Hey, man, we appreciate, appreciate that. It. Yep, looking forward. I hope uh, our, our live wells are full of five-pounders this year. <laughs> so, And speaking of five-pounders, can I go to Toledo Bend and catch a bunch of five-pounders right now? Well, they're, they're a lot fewer and far between than what they were about four or five years ago. There's still plenty in the lake. They're just they're just not as available for, for rod and reel as they used to be, but they are still there. Yeah. They're just a lot more scattered now because you, you don't have any of the, the concentrations where you can count, concentrate along a grass line or a creek. Or, Well, I, I, I would like to say you, you could probably go on the creek beds right now because we're just now getting into the winter season and probably see them starting to stage in those areas. But before that, we hadn't even had a winter until right now, so they're not, they've been a little bit more scattered until probably just the last few days or so. Yeah. Villas, when's the last time that you guys have done a shock test of any sort over there on Toledo Bend? Well, we wrapped up our three-year water body assessment from 2018 through, through 2020. Mm -hmm. So we completed that. The um, We had really good results in 2019, but, but they were really similar, actually, to the 2010 through 2012 assessment that we did. So... That was that was really good news, but yeah. But when we're doing our electrofishing surveys, I will say that we're doing those during the spring and we're on the shoreline. Mm -hmm. So most of the fish that you're seeing in the lake are going to be on the shoreline. In the past, we, we may have had some more fish a little bit further out along the grass lines, a little bit more scattered. So now, now there's a little bit of variability in that. Yeah. Now, Villas, when you're going out and doing shock tests. What's the what's the depth, uh, the farthest out you can go and you feel good about, you know, getting some results? I mean, is it five foot? Is it ten foot? Uh, how far out do you actually go from the shore? Yeah, with that equipment, we're limited to only about five, six, seven feet of water. Okay. Because you're trying to pinch the, the fish um, 
closer to the shoreline or yeah. along the bottom. And if you get too far away from that with that equipment, you know, you're only you're only pushing them away from the, your your equipment rather than pulling them to the boat, which you, which is what you're wanting to do. Right now, so you're trying to get fish per acre. How many fish per acre are we? Is that what you're is that what you're striving for? No, when we when we're using electro fishing equipment, we're actually trying to get trending data. And it's on catch per hour or bass per hour. Oh, okay. And we'll, 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 vary, we'll look at that from year to year just to see if there's any differences from year to year. Hmm. And we also break that up in different size categories. We'll have, we'll have preferred sizes. We'll have quality. We also have um, what we also call a, a lunker category, which we don't see many of with that equipment either. You don't see many very, really large bass with electro fishing equipment. Yeah, well, until you to be in, they can probably get out there a little bit, a little bit deeper. Uh, I know sight fishing, which is something I love to do. A lot of those bigger fish are out there in seven, eight, nine foot of water, so you might not be able to reach a lot of those. But, uh, Bill, let's get your and, and kind of broke it down a little bit there. But give me your opinion here going in the outlook, basically for twenty twenty two on Toledo Bend. And I know there's not a lot of vegetation, there's not a lot of shallow cover up there for those fish, but kind of. Give us your scientific biology, uh, biologist, you know, outlook for Toledo Bend going into 2022. Right. There's not near as much cover as there. a lot of bass anglers know is what, is what there used to be five, six, or seven years ago. But one of the bright outlooks that we're looking bad, back on was back in 2019 when we did have a, um, when the SRA had a, a drawdown, a, ne- a necessitated drawdown, mm-hmm. down to about seven feet. And we had a lot of, terrestrial growth growing out to the or at least going into the latter part of the year and once you see that if you give yourself a two to three or four year or four year window the fish they're anywhere from uh, 12 to 14 inches in length at that time period they usually kind of kick in a little bit so you should start seeing a, little, a few more of the four and five pounders that went through that little period right there mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have those drawdowns regularly like we used to. Right. We had, of course, we had a big one back in 2000, where our drought back in 2011, that kicked out all those large yes. 10 to 12 pound bass um, that were probably, probably previously four and five pounders before that. Mm-hmm. But uh, there is a little bit of a bright outlook, and it goes back to a couple of years ago during that 2019 period. And that's in so 2019 when you're saying you were seeing that that was the best year of late that you've saw uh, as far as number of bass and you're saying those now should be your three to five pound range. Right, we actually had our, our largest catch per unit effort uh, since I've been working here in 2019. We had a catch per hour of um, it's a cumulative catch per hour of 200 210 bass per hour, which is extremely. Okay. Uh, that's 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 really a large number per hour. Yeah. Um, normally, it's anywhere from about 135 to 150 or so per hour, and that includes all all your size size categories. But those fish that went through that, that were still anywhere in your quality <clears throat> to preferred size groups at that time period, um, should have gotten a boost during that drawdown mm-hmm. period, or at least not during that drawdown period, but when the water came up during that drawdown period. Let's uh let's break this thing down in, in three categories, uh, Villas. Lower end, mid lake, and upper end. Which of those three are you finding to be the most productive? Say if, say if a guy wants to take his family out fishing, where can he probably go and be the most productive uh, of those three categories, lower, middle, or upper part of the lake? Well, it all depends on what you want to do. <laughs> I mean, what kind of techniques do you want to fish? If you, if you want to fish those lower end or the deeper stuff in there, you're going to be um, uh, better off sticking down there on the lower end, deeper yeah. water for the right. part of the year. Right. It, if you're comfortable with crankbaits, worms, spare baits, a little bit of everything, I mean, anywhere from the middle end uh, to the upper end would be fine, or else just if the water does stay low, extremely low, say extremely low it's only four feet low right now right a drawdown pool level but um the upper end is um they're going to be pinched a little bit more they're not going to have as much place to hide uh still going to catch fish up there in the middle end they're still they're still going to be scattered on the lower end 
Now, now, Vilas, let me ask you this, I, and I know this is SRA, but I, I know you're in connection a lot with them on this, but as far as water level, like right now we're four feet low. Is, is that plan now? Granted, I know if we get a big rain, yes, it will come up, but is is are, are they planning on keeping the drawdown throughout the spring? No, they're following their FERC guidelines right, right. now. We just haven't had any rain. Yeah, right. right. Anywhere. Exactly. So, I mean, we're, we're, I don't think anybody's expecting the lake to stay low unless we do just go go into a drought or a drought period. Right. Again. But they're, they're not holding it where they've got it. It's just because we ain't had any rain. No, no, they're they're fixing to go into their their uh, where they're capping water off, and they'll keep water capped off until they go into their um, uh, prime power season, which is um, from uh, the end of April all the way through September. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. What about, and, and I know you just said, you know, really no vegetation on the lake and there's not. I mean, have you seen any growth or heard of anything going on anywhere around the lake? I know across pond, you have nothing to do with Sam Rayburn, but Sam Rayburn, they're starting to get some grass over there, a lot of grass in a lot of areas where it's been dead. And they're starting to see grass pop up over there. I haven't heard of anything, Villas, on Toledo Bend. Have you heard of anything? I mean, is there any vegetation starting to grow anywhere? Uh, very, very little bit. I mean, it- one of our concerns, is, our main concern, is that we've had we've been so um, desiccated of vegetation for so long. We don't know what how much seed or viable seed that we have out there. We have have had seen or we've seen some hydrilla pop up a little bit in the Blue Lake area. Yeah. But as soon as it comes up, it, it always seems like it gets mown down or, or vanishes within a week or two. Right. Right. And um, seems like the the warmer the, the seed, normally you would think. Um, you would keep having growth through the summertime, but it seems like you'll see some good growth in the spring and it just kind of goes away or creeps on out the warmer the water gets through the summer, which is a little bit of a mystery to us. Well, Vittles, how much of an impact, you know, a lot of guys that fish Raber and fish Toledo Bend, there, those trailers are going back and forth. Uh, the guys back in their boat in the water with hydrilla on it from Sam Rayburn, does that grass have an opportunity or a potential, the, the ability to, to, you know, Take root on on anywhere on the lake up there because of that. Well, what it, Steve's asking is, what do we have to do, yeah, do to transport to some Rayburn grass to haul a load of <laughs> grass over there to Toledo Bend? Can we haul it on our trailer and just drop it in the lake? <laughs> well, I, I've actually been guilty of that myself in the past. I've actually uh, tried um, moving some hydrilla in the live well from down there in Six Mile Creek one time up there around the bridge area when we had. When we had a little bit of a shortage, and it kind of started going away up around the Pendleton area. Of course, it never really took off. But um, I mean, there are laws against that. I'm not going to say no. Yeah, yeah, we know. We know. That's well, that's why Steve was, was hinting to the trailer well, part. I was being facetious. <laughs> I was just being. I was really kidding around. Yeah. But I do know that's how things get transplanted from one lake to another is through boat trailers and guys not cleaning off their trailer good. But I'm just surprised we don't have more grass at Toledo because of that. Because so many guys fish both those bodies of water. No, it, it says I haven't been on Rayburn in quite some time, but it sounds like they had a little bit of a. a um, a kickback on some of the hydrilla or another vegetation with a high water period also. Yeah, they did. Maybe coming back. I, I know there used to be a bunch down there at the Easley Flats, long lotus and everything else, and it looks like like kind of like a desert right now. And every every time I cross that bridge, there's certain areas but, um, on there's certain areas in the Mid Lake area, uh, Villas, that are just absolutely loaded. Uh, Five Fingers, Veach. Yeah. There's a ton of grass in both those pockets. Right. Now, one thing that uh, you do have to consider, uh, the difference differences between both of these reservoirs is Sam Rayburn is completely surrounded by, or it's not completely surrounded by national forest, but at least 95, 90 to 95% by national forest. Right. Then once you get over to Toledo Bend, you, you'll have, oh, a lot of um, clear cuts, a lot of intensive forest issues going on, watershed management issues, um, that keeps that of, keeps that water of, cloudy, doesn't it? A lot of work going along the bank line as far yeah. as bulkheads and um, work being done there. So it's a little bit different issue. Even even though Rayburn does go up and down a good bit, it does have a lot more buffering action along its shorelines and watershed than Toledo Bend does. Right. So, true. so Villas, you're saying from that the 2009 numbers you guys saw in that in those in those fish, you know, 12 to 14 inch fish, you're saying this year should be those three to five pound range. 
Uh, you know, it's looking like it's looking like this year is going to be the same conditions we've had in Toledo Bend the past three or four years. Yeah. But are you thinking in these tournaments we should see a tick up in the in the in tournament fishing, the size of fish being caught, uh, hopefully because of the numbers you saw back in 2019? That's our, that's our, what we're believing. We, we, I don't think we're going to see a lot more fish being caught. Right, you're just saying the I size. Few, I do think that we should see a boost in the size category. Right. Yeah. Right, because we, and we're hoping so, because, I mean, you know, <laughs> me and Steve in a show previous was, the the tournaments is just not coming back to Toledo Bend. We're you know the 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 big tournaments are not at Toledo Bend like they used to. And I definitely think if we can get the size yeah. caught in the tournaments up, I understand what you're saying. It's not going to be a big impact as far as numbers, but you know if you can have those big stringers or bigger stringers uh, being caught, that would definitely help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't I don't expect our lunkers to go up by any means. Also, because if you look back at our lunker catches per year especially those tbla lunkers the tens and above um you usually have to have those are always following some kind of a good drawdown period right or not um even though we even though we did see a little bit of a a boost we're probably going to see a little bit of a boost in that 2009 drawdown period i don't expect it to be more than anything any, anywhere near like we saw five or six years ago well yeah. i don't know if we'll ever see that again yeah but. That, that may be a one-time well, deal well i mean it could happen again you just, all it takes is just uh, have the right genetics which is what we have out there right now and to get a get a good low lake period for a year and i mean when i say a low lake period i'm, I'm saying anywhere from 10 to 12 feet below pool for a full year right right, right. right. Good deal. Well, Vils, we appreciate it and uh, look forward to, again, 2022 fishing season. It's here. And and, uh, and I do remember last year, uh, Vils, that uh, Kevin and I noticed a lot of the winning stringers that used to come from down south, they were all coming from north. way up north. Go north. Go yeah, north. Go north, young man. <laughs> and, uh, so. Yeah, it used to be, it used to be uh, everybody went up north way back in the 80s and early yep. 90s. Yeah. Yeah. south, and now they're moving back up that way once again. And, uh. uh one more question, Villas, and kind of off. We I know we always talk bass here, but white perch. What? It, it is unreal the number of white perch guides on Toledo Bend, and that are limiting out every day. What are you seeing in white perch on Toledo Bend? It is unreal the amount, the truckloads of white perch that gets hauled out of that lake. Brian, we we actually conducted a crappie survey also, or, or studied during the same period that we did our largemouth bass study, but um. Size sizes on crappie are actually going up also, even with the, with the increased pressure. So everybody's worried about pressure. You know, the number of guides over there, the number of people catching twenty five uh, crappie apiece. Uh, is that hurting anything? It's not. It's not. If anything, it's, it's actually helping. I mean, it, it appears there's that many white perch in that lake. Yeah, yeah. I I, I talked to another guy, a biologist. He said you can't you can't fish a lake out of white perch. He said you just can't do it. He said, "There's too many." He says, "Just too many out there." Uh, the other thing too, I know at, at Lake Fork, uh, Electronics has played such a key role now on these crappie guys. They're going mm-hmm. out and they're seeing these bigger fish on their electronics, and with live scope, they're actually picking those bigger ones off. They're targeting bigger crappie. How uh, now, Lake Fork? I know is not the size of Toledo Bend. But can that impact the fishery if all these guys at Toledo Bend are doing the same thing? Well, we have talked about that also at some of our little meetings and all, but um, until we actually see some kind of a decrease in population or some kind of dent that they would be making with that, we're yeah. just kind of, we, we don't want to, we don't want to try and uh, negate any kind of uh, technology that people right. are going out there to just go catch a and- limit of crappie, whether it's, I mean, a limit's a limit still, and they yeah. still got to get out there with a hook and line and catch the thing. Now, and Villas, there's there's nothing I've heard of or I've asked around. There is no nothing showing a decline in white perch and Toledo. Even as much pressure and, and people, when I say there is a pontoon on every point with every twelve people on with it. twelve people on that pontoon. I mean, everywhere on Toledo Bend is pon- there's as many white perch fishermen as they are bass now, Probably. and there I, there is no hint in any of a decline in white perch on the lake, right? 
Right, right, correct. It's probably actually more <laughs> crop That's crazy. Than bass, bass angling going on right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the size uh, of the it, lake helps that. Lake size, you're, you like that size. You even the lake yeah. the size of Sibley Lake. People worry about yeah. Sibley Lake during the winter time. <laughs> people going out there in the creek just hammering it, but. Thin them out, get them, thin that herd out, make them a little bit larger, give them more, give them more uh, shoulder room and, and uh, bait fish to grow on. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that was the lake I was referring to earlier. I didn't call the name, but yeah. it was, he, he we're said, not going to talk. We're not going to talk them names. We don't want to. <laughs> yeah. We won't talk about that. Yeah, we're trying to keep that secret. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Villas, man, hey, dude, uh, thank you. We appreciate you, man. And uh, uh, anytime you got any new reports, something's come out you think is of interest. Hey, give us a call, man. Say, hey, I got something I think your people would love to hear about. Uh, we'd love to have you. You're very informative. You do a great job. You're very thorough. And, again, we can't say thank you enough for taking time to be with us. Well, thank you for inviting us here, um, Steve and Kevin. Say Hi, hello Jeff. to your dad and uh, uh, pop Easton upside the head when next time you see him. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, Phyllis. <laughs> thank you all. All right. Willis Dowden, uh, he's uh, part of the uh, Bo Dowden family. Bo's, uh, that's one of Bo's sons. And, of course, Easton, the guy's referring to Easton, another son that we all fish against. We're all good friends with Easton. He's a great guy, great family, good group of people right there. And uh, they'll come better than the Dowdens. And uh, so thank you, Villas. We appreciate you being on with us today. And good information there. That is really good uh, to hear about, you know, the size of the fish. Being 2019 is kind of – when they seen their greatest number and the since we've had since it was really good back in 15 16 but yeah. 2019 when they had some really good numbers that 12 to 14 inch range saying that those fish should be between the three and five pound range now so hopefully this year we and he's agreeing that we should see an uptick in weight not necessarily yeah. numbers right. but in weight in Quality. the tournament which will help yeah. which, which yeah. will help so yeah and uh, real quick, I want to bring something to your attention. If you hadn't been to our Facebook page, I've, I've actually got a poll question out there this week. Uh, attention all bass anglers, what fishing line do you favor for jig and worm fishing? Fluorocarbon, copolymer, or mono, and why? Uh, I've had some people that just really are having an issue with fluorocarbon. Now, I'm not one of those guys. I love it. Thank the world of it. But I was curious to see what's the majority of the guys fishing? What do they think? And so far, it's been a really good response to it. But if you're interested in making a response, go to our Facebook page, Tackle Talk Live. Check out that poll question. Give us your information. We appreciate it. And we're going to take another quick break. When we return, we'll have some information about events coming up at Sam Rayburn. Stay tuned. You're watching Tackle Talk Live. Are you looking for the finest custom-built rods ever made? Then look no further than Pride Rods. Fishing rods built to last and made in Montgomery, Texas. Constructed by Mr. Billy Kistler with the finest Gary Loomis North Fork composite blanks available. They offer a complete line of both spinning and casting rods for both fresh and salt water. Pride Rods do more than pass the eye test. They excel in performance as well. Ask your local tackle dealer if they carry Pride Rods and pick one up and try it for yourself. You'll see why so many anglers are using pride rods to learn more go to priderods.com or call 832-418-6040 the next time you're headed for toledo bend or sam rayburn stop by keith's toledo bend tackle they have an awesome supply of everything you'll need to catch the big ones whether your trip calls for bass fishing white perch tackle catfish bait or the ultimate fighting shiners keith's tackle has you covered Keith and former Elite Series pro Ben Matsubu also have the latest information on what, how, and where you need to be fishing on Sam Rayburn or the Ben. So for all your tackle needs, check out Keith's Toledo Bend Tackle located just off Highway 21 on the Texas side of Toledo Bend or call 409-625-0181. The Lakes Insurance Agency is an independent insurance agency that has been taking care of Texans' insurance needs for over 25 years, offering auto, homeowners, boat, RV, life, health, and commercial insurance. Owner Clark Moore is a local guide and tournament angler who understands your insurance needs and wants to be your go-to guy for all your insurance needs. For a free quote, give him a call and see why so many Texans trust the Lake Insurance Agency. Located at 805 Southeast Stalling Suite 3, Nacogdoches, Texas, or or call 936-205-4467. 
You're watching Tackle Talk Live, a show dedicated to making you a better angler. Now back to the guys with all the inside scoop, Kevin Jean and Steve Graff. You're watching Tackle Talk Live. I'm Ranger Diver Pro Staffer Steve Graff, along with VNM General Manager Kevin Jean. And real quick, we've got some other sponsors that are also a part of this program that we'd like to recognize this time. This segment is presented by Pride Rods, Keys Toledo Bend Tackle, the Lakes Insurance of Nacogdoches, Texas, and Lone Star Bass Trail. Kevin, you got something about Lone Star? I do. Make sure you give uh, <clears throat> give Lone Star Bass Trail a like and follow on Facebook. They had the very first term of the year this past weekend, on, or actually on Friday, January 1st. They had their first MLF-style tournament, which actually Clint Wade and Stacy Wade now uh, won that event. But they he's got several other events coming up. One is January 30th. It's a Lone Star Bass Trail Open. Uh, make sure, again, give them a like, give them a follow on Facebook to keep up with all their tournaments going on. He does a lot of tournaments, uh, Nacogdoches area, a lot of different tournaments. He does some MLF style tournaments, but it's definitely something for any of you, Sam Rayburn, East Rayburn, East, East Texas guys want to make sure you follow that page. So give them a like on Facebook. Also, along with Pride Rogers, you can see on the front, we've also got Fish Care Products, Fish Life Fish Care Products. They've got live well cleaner. They've got live well treatment for you when you got your fish in your live well. They've got a kit. Of, uh, what is that kit? Is that the first aid kit? That's the, the fish care kit. The fish care kit. they got the fish care kit. We've got, I mean, they've got a great line of products. Check them out. Go to their website and uh, check it out. So uh, looking forward to Doing more things with them this this coming 2022 year. You'll be hearing more about that. Uh, okay, real quick, uh, Kevin, we, we've pretty much done the Toledo Bend thing. Now let's jump over to Sam Rayburn. we got tournaments coming up. got a BFL we this weekend. We do. There's tournaments every weekend starting to kick off. Um, real quick, some tournament update news. The Outlaw Outdoor Sweet 16 tournament was supposed to be the very first one of the year. was supposed yeah. to be this past weekend on Sunday. Well, that's when the – the hurricane winds blew through, and it was yeah. 20 degrees all yeah. day long. You didn't want to be out there. No, no. So <laughs> very smart. Clint Stacy. They, they postponed that event. So that event will be this coming weekend on Sunday. So Saturday is the BFL. Sunday will be the Sweet 16 event uh, again on Sunday, the first Sweet 16 event of the year. Yeah. So looking forward to that as well. And again, like I just said, the BFL kicks off this weekend. You know, and a lot of guys, Kevin – they they have an issue with this, and I, I'm sure the BFL guys have heard about it. Uh, the, the guys don't like starting right now. It's just a little too early. Uh, they'd rather wait. I remember we used to start the first week in February. It yeah, seems like but every year we move them farther up. We do, Steve, but it's hard to it's hard to argue with results. Well, it's hard to find the boat ramps too. That's what a lot of guys don't understand. It's hard yeah. to get boat yeah, ramps. Yeah, it, it is. But you know when. Every time I guarantee the BFL has 200 boats this weekend, yeah, you know, yeah. um, Bass Chance, which is coming up January 22nd, I guarantee it's going to have 300 boats. It's yeah. early. People have done hunting. They're quick, they're ready to start fishing. Um, it's just, I, I don't understand why when it's 30 degrees outside, we have a better turnout than we do in April and May. Don't yeah. really understand that, but January shows results. So well, these tournament guys are going. I mean, they've got they're showing up for it, so they're going to go. But they can't go anywhere else, Steve. They can't go to North Texas or Arkansas. Right. It's way too cold up there. Yeah. So they can yeah. start like the BFL. Rayburn is the first BFL to start all over the country every every year because they can start here. Yeah. They can't start anywhere else. Maybe Florida. Yeah, Okeechobee be the only other place I can. Think North of. Alabama can't yeah. start yet. It's too right. co it's too no, cold there. I, I agree. So you know it, it's it, it is what it is with, with that coming up uh, the sixteenth. We got the rattle trap tournament, and and again that's another reason I think a lot of guys like January February. They can pick up a trap and you can chunk and wind. I mean let's just be honest. It's a chunk and wind time of year. Uh, for some reason, everybody loves to throw a trout. They catch a lot of fish on it. You catch big fish on it. So uh, I think it's that time of year. Yeah. Guys like going. You tie on an orange rattle trap. It's not brain surgery right now. Right. And uh, so uh, you, it ain't hard to figure them out necessarily. You just got to get in an area where they're, where they're biting. Right. And uh, so then on the 22nd, like you said, we got Bass Champs. Coming up the 27th, we got... The MLF Pro Circuit. That is the uh, the old FLW circuit. So the MLF Pro Circuit. I know a lot of guys, like Nick LeBrun. I yep, mean, this yep. was when the, the LeBoom, the big LeBoom spinnerbait, this yep. is when Came it out. was... 
This is when it was started with him several years ago. Justin Cooper, I know, is real excited. There's going to be a lot of guys excited yeah. for that event coming up. Albert uh, Collins, I'm sure, will be in that. And, uh, no, Castle Al- Albert's not. Albert's, Albert's not. not. Oh, that's, that's, this that's the, the pro this tour. is the OFLW. This so is, is the pro Dine, tour. Are they, no. They're not in that. Mm-mm. No. Uh, Dickey's in it. Andrew Upshaw? Andrew's not in it, Andrew's no. Andrew's not in it? Uh-uh. So he's just fishing the opens. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So but anyway, it's a great turnout. It's a great <laughs> Great group of pros will be out there in that one, and uh, it'll be, I'm sure, a, a slug fest in January 27th. It, it will, especially if the weather holds out. You know, a lot of times in January we have what they call Indian summers. You know, I, I fished in January in shorts and a t-shirt. Well, we may be in another trend like that again this year. It looks like because even though the Farmers Almanac, which a lot of people live by, said this would be the worst winter in a long time, but so far. It hasn't panned out like that, Kevin. Not for our region anyway. It, it hasn't. It hasn't. So January 27th, the Pro Circuit starts. January 29th is the Outlaw Team Series event number one. Uh, then the very next day, January 30th, is the Lone Star Bass Trail Open. That ends January, Steve. Yeah. Then yeah. February 3rd through the 5th is the Brandon Belt uh, Team Tournament. First case, $100,000. We've talked about it a lot on this, uh, on the show about it. Is it full? I think he's short. I think he's still got like 20 spots open. Okay. There you so go. he's high 300, almost 400 boats. Yeah. Um, for everybody that's registered in that tournament, there was an email sent out, I believe it was yesterday, and I got it. Very interesting email, Steve. Mm-hmm. So in the email, it talked about uh, the upcoming Brandon Belt Pro Team Series yeah. and the individual Pro Series. Oh. I bet they got people's Very attention. Very interesting. It did mine. As soon as I read it, I was like, whoa. Yeah. And uh, I talked to Ryan Williams yesterday, who is the <clears> tournament <throat> director, uh, and actually, actually asked him to come on the show today uh, to talk about those two. And he's like, Kevin, we don't have it completely dialed in yet. Yeah. He's going to come on um, right before the Brandon Belt tournament or the week after, uh, talk about the tournament, and then talk about these two new series he has coming now when we had him on back in the summer they were talking about you know having a the the, basically the team series right right. being uh you know all east texas about three lakes first place at each event's 100k and a championship is a quarter of a million dollars right is what fifty thousand is what he was talking about back Mm -hmm. in the summer if they're able to pull this off steve yeah and then i see in which i haven't heard anything about this individual pro series. Right, right. This could get very, very interesting for all the fishermen in East Texas. Well, especially, you know, uh, I mean, if this first Brandon Belt tournament goes off without a hitch and there's not a lot of it major will. issues. It will. Uh, it'll be fine. Th- it, it'll just add fuel to the fire. I mean, this guys will follow. Guys, anglers tend to follow circuits that are run the right way. If they're run right and they're managed the right way, they will follow them. Rules must be enforced, and they expect you to enforce them. And when they bend the rules, that's when circuits get a little bit, uh, I don't know if I want to fish that no more. Uh, it creates a problem for tournament directors, uh, trust me, and, and turnout for those circuits. But uh, uh, And also, real quick, you got the ABA Solo 150 circuit. You got three events in that. Texoma, you follow Oklahoma, Sam Rayburn. March, April, June are the tournament dates for that. If you're interested, go to AmericanBassAnglers.com to register. Uh, they still have openings. The solo is gaining momentum again. Right after Christmas break, they anticipated that. So a lot of guys are starting to sign up for that again. Last year, I think we averaged 80 to 85 uh, per event for that. And they're hoping to hit 100 to 125 this year. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, check it out. And again, we got the poll question out there. Which Brent, which type of line do you like to use? Fluorocarbon, copolymer, or mono? Which of those three uh, is, is, is your go-to line? And don't forget, January 1st, Bass Cash Bash has started on Sam Rayburn. Yeah. Uh, Toledo Bend, it starts in March. Yep. But when you register, you can register. If you're Sam Rayburn, Toledo Bend, like we are, you can register for both lakes at once and get uh, and get a little discount, I believe, instead of registering for both separate. Go ahead and register for both at once. But Sam Rayburn has started. So as of January 1st, if you are registered for the Bass Cash Bash and you catch a tag fish, you are... Uh, all the tags are worth a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, um, and there is a truck tag, there is a boat tag. You can go on there on their Facebook page, Bass Cash Bash. Check out the check out the video of him releasing the 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 boat fish and the truck. I mean the boat and the truck fish that 
One of them, I believe it was the boat, he was at Jackson Hill Marina when he dropped the fish in the water. He shows you right where he releases them. Of course, those fish probably don't hang around right there. But um, some may. Some may. Some, some may. may. So make sure you are registered. If you're going to be on Sam Rayburn anytime soon, make sure you are registered for Bass Cash Bash. And just to give you an idea of the lakes, I've pulled it up right here. It's on the website. Sam Rayburn, Louisiana Delta. That's, of course, that's down south, Louisiana. Toledo Bend, Lake Fork, Caddo Lake, Gunnersville, Alabama. Lake Eufaula, Alabama, uh, Pickwick, Wilson, uh, and the South Coosa chain. I think Pickwick, Wilson is brand new. It is. South it Coosa, is. I think, was there last year. It was a, it was a, it's $50, guys. It costs $50 to get registered. Dude, and I'm telling you, especially if you're in this region right here or the Alabama region, oh, you can't go wrong. I mean, if you're going fishing, make sure you're signed up because so many Absolutely. times we see guys – that weren't we, signed We've up. all heard those stories, yeah, Steve. Yeah, don't be that guy, <laughs> as the slogan we've goes. We've all heard those stories. So uh, I, I'll sign up this week, and uh, that way if I'm going to leave Ben Raver, and I'll, I'll, if I catch one, I'm good to go. So Absolutely. And uh, money well invested if you're one of the mm -hmm. uh, lucky guys to win. And there's a lot of people that catch those fish, guys. They're not in some backwater hole 40 miles up a lake. There, there were people fish a lot. So uh, that's where they were caught. That's where they were released. And uh, so check it out. I think you'll be more than pleased. Uh, and you know, it's 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 something else to do. I mean, if you're going fishing, why not? Fifty bucks. What the heck? Yeah, it's fifty bucks. Half a tank of gas. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, anything else, Kevin? Is that that it for today? I think that does it for today. Man, we had a long show today, about forty five minutes for us. So uh, again, we appreciate you tuning us in. Uh, check us out again: YouTube, Facebook, podcast, Instagram now, Instagram now. So if you'd like to become a member of our sponsorship team. Please message us on our Facebook page. Kevin will make sure he sends out a detail packet, what that all entails, and and uh, how you can be a, become a part of our sponsorship family. And uh, for Kevin Jean, producer James Stanfield, and by the way, congratulations, James. He's an NSU graduate of Northwestern State University. He is now going to be in the working world, Kevin. <laughs> Do we pay him? Uh, no. No, he, he's, he's free. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, sorry, James. <laughs> Got to get a real job now. Uh, but anyway, for James Stanfield, yours truly, Steve Graff. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week right here, 1130, every Tuesday from now on for Tackle Talk Live.